the body, being fitted and held together by whatever joint supplies, according to the proper, proper working of each individual part, cause the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Last but not least, Matthew 28, 18 and 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all, all, all that I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. A word of God for the people of God. Samaritan. 
Samaritans like a, a Holy Spirit drone strike on our enemies, <laughs> knowing that missiles and violence are never the answer to any problem. Can I get an amen? amen. Uh, but they did those things. Peter, one minute, is talking about, yep, you're the Lord of the universe. The next minute, oh, you're kind of crazy. Let me cast those demons out of you. Jumping out of boats, trying to cut people's ears off in the garden, and Jesus tells him to put his sword away. We see that really the disciples make some really big mistakes and do some really crazy things. In fact, they don't even understand who Jesus is until he's raised up from death and risen. And then they go, oh, now I get it. Right? So we can't look back and say, well, the church is perfect here or there or, or, or anywhere in history. But does that mean that we should not have the faith to that church can be. Amen. Does that mean that we should not dream of the kind of church that Jesus envisioned? Amen. And are we willing to give our lives to bring that kind of church by the power of the Holy Spirit into being? I came to tell you this morning about the church that never was and might yet be. Grab your Bibles for you this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. It is a light to our path. It is a mirror that shows us who we are. Mm -hmm. It is a revelation of God that shows us who you are. And so we pray this would not be simply time of just another church service, but we come humbly seeking an encounter with you. We ask that you would cause these words to burst forth from their deep cage and live and dance in us in incarnate ways. We ask the Holy Spirit that you would give us the strength to not simply be hearers of the word, only, but doers also. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God is future fitting us for life in the new creation. God is doing some future fitting. Uh, slap your neighbor and say, God needs to future fit your life. <laughs>
going in mission to the world. Yeah. Can, can y'all get that in the team? Yeah. yeah. Can you remember that? No. Now all of us, 
All of us who are in Christ can enter into that Holy of Holies. This means that God has created a new community on the earth. It's a new creation community called the church. And in this new creation community, Jesus himself is the high priest. And we are the priesthood of all believers. Yes. So there's not like the pastor up here in a hierarchy kind of pyramid or the, you know, ordained professional clergy person and all of us just consume the McDonald's religious goods. No, all of us are actually the priesthood of all believers. All of us have a call on our life. All of us have gifts and graces and all of us live under that high priest Jesus. Amen. So we've been brought into this new community. We have this great priest, the high priest over the house of God. We can approach with a true heart, full of faith, and cleansed and washed in the waters of our baptism. We don't have to carry that guilt and that shame anymore. We don't have to carry the, the traumas and the pains of our past anymore. We have been washed and cleansed and healed and brought into this new configuration, this new community called the church. This is why I really struggle with this idea of a churchless Christianity. You cannot be a Christian and not be in a community. We are baptized into a community. And yes, the community is a mess. People say, well, the church is full of hypocrites. And I'll say, yep, but you know what? We still got one more chair left for you. <laughs> Like, that's kind of your job, and we have to go to church. And 
And I'm like Googling, I'm trying to find out two or three different churches. I want to experience every kind of worship and every kind of preaching and all that. I want to go to experience all the different kinds of worship. I want to be in the community of God. I want to come into the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm not missing that. I don't know. Yeah. 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 never over an hour. It's an hour and a half every Sunday. I, I never meet the Baptists out to lunch. Always <laughs> uh, or when I hear things like, I don't like going to church today, so and so is preaching and it's not so and so, so I'm not going to go. Or, or I'm not going to go to church today. The worship team, they always sing off key or they mess <laughs>
Mike's favorite play, flavor. So when you came to the basketball court and you had Mike's favorite flavor, you knew you were going to dunk and do things like that. <laughs> but no, as the church, we're trying to be like Jesus. We're growing up like Jesus. And we talk so much about the blood and the cross and all those things. And yes, that redeems us. But, but really, it's not just the death of Jesus that redeems us. It's his life. My favorite uh, theologian, Athanasius, uh, uh, says that God became like us so that we might become like God. That God puts on flesh and shows us how to be human beings. That's redeeming. God shows us how to talk to each other, how to love each other, and how to care for each other. And we're all growing up in that community. And Ephesians says when we do that, every ligament, every joint and space and muscle working together grows up. And we become this living body, this organism of Jesus in the earth. And we all are like little cells within that body that create the body of Christ in the earth. That's the kind of community that we're talking about. That where we all do our part and become a, a part of that body, we're growing up together in love. Uh, uh, Jesus is the head of this church and we are the body. Then that is a holy community. Pursuing loving God and loving Him with all that we are. And finally, if a community uh, doesn't have this final piece, it's not really the church, right? Yeah. That's right? Because the church does not exist for itself. It exists for the ones who are not here yet. And so we talk about go, we're talking about mission, going on mission to the world. And one of the most powerful places we see this is in Matthew 28. It's the climax of Matthew's gospel. You might say, well, no, isn't the resurrection of Jesus like breaking death's back? Isn't that kind of the climax? No, it's not. Because if Jesus breaks the power of the tomb, and then we don't do anything about it, right? But he stands in his risen, beautiful, olive skin, glorious, wound bearing self, and he speaks over the disciples Go. As you go, make disciples. Where there is mathatas. And the word is really about being a learner. And from the very beginning of Christian history, followers of Jesus are known as learners. We are lifelong learners of Jesus, taking on the life and the rhythms of Jesus. It's a lifelong journey. None of us get there and say, hey, I got it. I'm sitting the black on the wall. I'm fully like Jesus now. No, it doesn't work that way. Lifelong learners of Jesus. So we have to have a spirit of teachability. We have to have a humility to be able to accept challenge and to realize that people who love us, when they call out the best in us, it's not to hurt us, but it's to help us grow in the likeness of Christ. And we're on that journey of lifelong learning. And he even tells us how to do this. It's kind of remarkable. I get to travel a lot and talk to Methodist clergy all over the place. And you know, our mission statement is not the church is we make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, right? But ask a good Methodist how they do that. And it's funny, because there'll be crickets, <laughs> and silence. Oh, our mission statement is to make disciples. How do we actually do it? Hmm. Not really sure about that. Well, we're going to talk more about this in the, in the coming weeks. But we make disciples through relationship, through this messy relational process. Um, and Jesus actually tells us how to do it. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Jesus tells us there's a trinity. And teaching them to obey everything that I have taught you. And so you go, and we get that word obey and obedience, and like, we don't like it. I know my kids don't like it. You know, that word obey, but it's really part of our calling as followers of Jesus. That, that we're, we, we can't just stay how we were pre-Jesus and we just keep going on doing those things that are self-destructive toward ourselves and toward others. But that we got to grow and, and, and we make disciples as we go along with this journey. So I'm going to wrap it up with this quickly. I wanted to give us uh, uh, some taking all of your feedback over the last couple of weeks and you filled out those uh, different uh, uh, hopes and dreams and some of your ideas of how we can do that. So our 2020, these are our short-term goals as we're moving toward life of the tree. These are things we want to shoot for. So think of like a target or a bullseye. Yeah, I know. It's not really 2020, is it? The, the, the 2020 vision. Yeah, <laughs> it's not your eyes. It's not that you don't have 2020. <laughs> but here's, in each one of our values, gather, grow, go. Here's the 
some, some goals that we're going to shoot for, okay? So 20 new traditional worshipers. Our traditional worship service is the deep roots of this congregation. Yes. And they deserve our care and our love and our nurture. Yes. Right? And uh, this, we're doing pretty good here with our little church plant called New Life. It's going pretty well, right? But how do we give some life and energy and strength to that? Now, I don't know the answer to these goals. So um, I, it's kind of frustrating sometimes folks have come to me and, and very clearly even written it out for me. Like, that's your job, pastors, to go get uh, yeah, chronologically mature folks and get them into the worship service on, at 11 o'clock. But here's the thing. Like, I uh, don't necessarily, like, go and play shuffleboard or hang out and do those kind of things. In fact, what I'm trying to teach us about evangelism, like many of you are sitting here today, because I invited you to be here, right? And, and I formed a relationship with you and asked you to come. But how can I do that with people that are 80 and 90 years old that I don't necessarily do the things that they do and have an opportunity? So who's going to do that? Well, people that have relationships with people that are kind of walking to make what you're going to do that and bring them into our traditional service, right? Um, so 20 children and youth actively following Jesus. You know, we got this amazing thing. We have about 20 children and youth as part of our congregation. They, they show up. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they even all show up together and you have a nice big youth service. But how are we really uh, inviting those children, those youth, into the life of the church? How are we going to respond to Kristen, who raised her hand and said yes to Jesus, and forming a community around her, uh, and more integrating her into this community that we call the church? Uh, and 20 steps toward racial, racial integration. So rather than having two congregations work, work, worshiping under one roof, how do the wild ones and God's glory um, become one church? That's going to be the focus of 2020. We've got 20 simple steps uh, that we can take to try to integrate and uh, have our churches become one church. And then under the uh, grow group, 20 grow groups. And maybe you're asking, so what's a grow group? And I'm glad you asked. For the purpose of the grow group is to care and support one another, the grow of God, and grow our desire to share that love and so these grow groups are where we come together and actually paraxus mas each other, and provoke each other, and, and call out the best of each other and cultivate those fruits together, right? And we, we get to just be in a relationship and hear from each other. I think we're on the right page as a church. I had a couple years ago, this couple come to me and said, we're going to leave the church um, because we kind of feel like maybe we've entered into a cult. Now, I'm scared of cults, like, and those kind of things, like, let's go to an island together and drink beer, kind of thing. Let's not do that. But, in some other ways, the Church of Jesus Christ actually is a cult. Like, we believe in a deceased carpenter who's been raised up from death and worship in the dark room every day. I'll just say it. But when I, when I, they unpack that with me, it's like, well, like, because we have a bowling league, and we have all these fresh expressions, and like, we've been together like five times this week, and the church is like, in consuming our lives. And like, isn't church just, usually like, you go on Sunday morning, you do your deal, you put the tip in the bank, and you go back, right? Yeah. So we were actually creating a kind of a church in the community where we're getting together day, day after day throughout the week, and actually having a real community. And not everybody's comfortable with that, right? Because we're used to the show. We're used to you show up at the big pretty building and you do the thing for an hour and then you go back out. But that's not the, I, I, exactly what Jesus is doing for the church, right? So these grow groups are a place for us to kind of bear our soul. How goes it with your souls? 20 mature disciples. Uh, these are the folks who uh, have stepped forward and said, yes, I want to be a fully devoted disciple of Jesus, those fruits of the Spirit. Uh, I'm working with those folks and we're starting to And then finally, um, here's our, our go goal. It's easy. 20 fresh expressions of church in 2020. So we're on the road to that, right? Fresh expressions of form a church for the people who don't go to church. So all these little communal things that we're doing out there, the people who don't go to church, those are fresh expressions. That's how we're teaching them about Jesus, inviting them to the community. Most of them are never going to come back here. Some of you have come back here and will come back here. And that's a beautiful thing. Do you think we can do this? Yes. Think we can do this? So here's the last thing. Uh, which 
2020 goals do you feel God calling you to? So here's how we're going to do this. By every single one of us taking the responsibility and taking a role in this. Right? That every single one of us can pick one of these things and say, this is what I feel particularly called to. I want to get that 20 traditional worship. I want to grow the roots you know, I personally believe in children and youth, and I want to take up that call and figure out a way to do that. I personally want to see integration of our congregations. I want to do that. Every single one of us can take one or multiple of these. And then what I'm asking you to do is just pray about this over the week. There's a handout in your bulletin where you can write it all down uh, and respond. And we want to get those responses back, and we want to connect with you about those things as we as we move forward. Doing this together. You know, the perfect church has never been, but it might yet be. And the way that it comes into being is when all of us take responsibility to our call to follow Jesus and to, love Amen. And to gather and to grow. Amen. And we're inviting you into that wonderful journey. We get to do that together. That's exciting, isn't it? Amen. Isn't it beautiful Amen. that we get to be part of that, that new creation? That God is future fitting us and our community and our church for life of the tree. And every time we come to the table, Morgan, will you come up and help me? Y'all give it up for one